Hey, we want to go over a little electrical safety today, including the use of meters and the proper meters to do the job. Electricity is can be either helpful or very harmful. There's no doubt that many people have been electrocuted and the thing is, is that electrocution does not take a whole lot of amperage at all. And matter of fact, less than a half an amp is enough to kill someone. The, the, the path of least resistance is the, 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 the uh, way the electricity or the electrons are going to move. And if it moves through some of our vital parts of our body, it will kill us. So we want to make sure that when we're measuring circuits that we have good equipment to measure it. And bottom line, our meter is something that can mean the difference between life and death. If we have a, not price wise, but a sorry meter and we're dependent upon that sorry meter, then we're saying that our life is not worth much. That's the bottom line. I'm not telling you to go out and buy a high price meter, but make sure that you get a meter that is for the proper job. Now, there is a problem about the rating of meters, and, and keep in mind, I'm going to read this. A manufacturer may choose to self-certify a meter it produces without any independent verification. And to go a little further, these meters may include a statement such as, designed to meet specification. In other words, it may not mean anything at all. So there is some uh, categories that you need to be aware of that have come up in the last few years and I want to tell you what those categories are. Category one on a meter. Category, category, oh, wow. Category 1 is required for use on low energy equipment such as protected electronic circuits and on high voltage low energy sources from a high winding resistance transformer. A typical example would be a photocopier machine. Then you move into Category 2. Category 2 is required for single phase receptacle connected loads such as appliances, portable tools and other household type loads. The outlet, just like an outlet in your home, the outlet should be located at least 30 feet from a CAT3 source. Well, what is a CAT3 source? A CAT3 meter is required for the distribution circuits such as three-phase bus and feeder circuits, load centers, and distribution panels. These test meters are also used for permanently installed loads such as three-phase motors, large commercial lighting systems, and heavy appliance outlets with short connections to the service entrance. A CAT3 meter would be what you would want for the HVACR field. CAT4, which is the last category of meters, is required for outside and service entrance use from the pole to the meter and the meter to the service panel. These test meters are also used for outside overhead and underground cable runs because they may be affected by lightning strikes. Now, you can use a CAT4, but it's not required for the type of work that you're going to be doing in HVACR. But at least have a CAT3 meter. Now, a little bit of discrepancy is the voltage ratings on the meter. Now, I'm going to see if we can see this on our meters here. I'm going to try to hold it steady here. You have a CAT, I believe that's CAT 3, yes, and I have to turn it here so I can see. 600 volts, CAT 4, 300 volts. When you see that 300 volts, it makes you think that that's not that good. But the CAT 4 actually supersedes the safety of the other. So the voltage alone is not what you're looking at. Voltage is important, but keep in mind the category uh, is, is where the real protection is at for the individual. You'll notice that I have a couple of meters here. One is 
only rated for Cat 3. This one's only rated for Cat 3. This is an analog meter. Instead of the digital readouts, you would have an analog readout. Overall, overall, the trade is going away from the analog meters, except in certain applications, but they're still out there. We still have them around and we still use them. The difference between analog and, and, and digital is analog is going to have a scale of needle. You'll have to read off the, the uh, scale instead of a direct reading or digital reading. Keep in mind the leads are important too. If you have a CAT 3 meter, your leads also need to be able to at least come to the CAT 3 requirements. If you have leads that have become broken or maybe somewhere inside occasionally you have a loose connection, throw it away. Don't just throw it away, destroy it and buy some new leads. Your life is depending on it. I cannot overemphasize that. Here we have another little meter and again we see the CAT 3 600 volts to ground safety. I have an older meter that does not have a CAT rating and that's alright. I'm familiar with this particular meter, it's just it's, it's older, it doesn't have the CAT rating but it's still a very, very good meter. So I'm not telling you to go out and throw away your older meters. Just make sure that their rating is sufficient for what you're doing. Now, we, I'm going to do something that I don't advise you to go and do. I'm going to put on a pair of safety glasses here, and I'm going to be discharging and charging a capacitor straight off the line. Now, normally you would use a resistor to discharge the capacitor. When you have a sudden surge of discharge, you can actually damage the capacitor or, or uh, we don't want to talk about the other. But, mm -hmm. but I want to show you something. I am going to plug this up and I want you to watch what the meter reads. Okay? What do you see? 128 volts. Okay, I'm going to unplug it. What do you see? You see very little voltage. Watch closely. Did you see that? Was you able to get that, Ricky? Do it again. Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> do it again. I was, I was aiming at the meter, okay, Dave. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to be closer to the meter this time. I have plugged it up. All right. We have 128 volts. I now am reading closer to zero, well, zero volts. Again, oh yeah, I got it. I still got a spark there. Ouch. Where in the world <laughs> did that come from? Here's the problem. We were measuring AC voltage. Now I have flipped to the DC vote, uh, vote scale. Once again, I plug it up and I'm reading, if you will, very little DC, in fact, less than one volt DC. We know it's plugged up. There's voltage there. I unplug it, and suddenly I read 135 volts. If I catch this right, if I catch this right, I would actually measure peak voltage. I didn't quite catch it there, and I'll tell you, I'm trying to unplug it if you will, at a point that it would be close to peak voltage. And if you think about it, I'm trying to actually pick a time. It's about like playing the lottery here because I'm trying to pick the top of the cycle. Getting there. You're, you're, you're getting on up there. That's 158. And I'll show you what's possible. Our meters use, I, I need to take these off since I'm not going to have it plugged up again kind of awkward over our, my regular glasses. Coming in from the building current, we have a sine wave of AC. Now, AC is measured by its effective voltage, RMS as it's known. That's root mean square. It is the effective voltage or the effective power that's being used. It is just that you take 
Uh, not, not to go into a whole lot of detail, but you take different points on the sine wave and it's an average which gives you an effective voltage. That voltage here was what, 128? Wasn't that what we read with the AC? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you'll notice that we have a plus and a minus. This is one cycle. This one cycle on 60 cycle current occurs 1 60th of a second. But you're actually having 120 peaks per second. One positive, one negative. When we measured the AC, we measured the RMS at 128. The truth is, the capacitor sees the peak, which is here. Okay? And we can figure that mathematically as the square root of 2, which is equal to 1.414, and we can actually multiply that times 128. Roughly, that's going to be about 178 volts. So DC-wise, and it depends on whether I caught it on the top or the bottom, whether it was going to be AC or DC, we could have had as much as 178 volts across that capacitor, even though it was unplugged. So what I'm warning, or giving you a warning of, is just because the power is off and you have measured the, the voltage on the unit, it still may, may have some potential there, DC potential. Where that is a big problem is where you have capacitors. Let's move over here for just a moment. In our field today, we're seeing more and more use of the ECM motors. The ECM motor has large capacitors in it. These capacitors may very well stay charged for up to two to three minutes after the power is disconnected. Allow time for these to discharge. As I heard in an earlier video, a man said you're getting paid for the time anyway. So look at it that way. It's better to be safe than sorry. Now, in the residential and light commercial, these capacitors don't have the ump, if you will, that you will see in the commercial end. In the commercial and industrial end, we use, which is very similar to the ECM, a variable speed drive, such as this. Let me warn you, these things are lethal. They have capacitors in them that can hold the charge for five minutes or more. In, in fact, if the discharge system is not working correctly, um, it could be a very long time that it would hold the charge. You must ch check the buses in there for both AC and DC. I cannot overemphasize how dangerous this is. A person will measure it with an AC, think there's no voltage there, stick their hands on it, they may not live to tell about it. So please be careful on that particular thing. Now, the bottom line is, is don't be afraid of electricity. Respect it. It can be your friend, but it also can put you in the grave. Thank you. Meters. Some of the things to look for when you go out and purchase meters, we talked about the CAT ratings. You want at least a CAT 3 rating for the HVACR field. Uh, you have the choice between analog or digital. Most people like the digital nowadays. Some meters actually have a digital and analog scale. I see the trend getting away from analog completely on the, uh, on the uh, electrical meters, but it's a preference. But let me tell you some things that you really need to look for. Number one, as I said before, you want to make sure that it, it does have a CAT3 rating. Number two, we use voltages at 600 volts or less. You get above the 600 volt, it's a different category that you're working with. We don't want to uh, get into that for our field. Uh, make sure that if you buy a amp probe that the, the uh, jaws will open up enough and you'll have room to be able to get around the, the size of wire that you're, you're going to be using. You can see that these are quite large and would, be suffi would suffice in anything that we would be doing in this field. When you're measuring the amperage, you want to try to line this up between these points. I don't know if I'm holding it steady enough, but the, it's the middle of the jaws. The jaws must be closed. Okay. Uh, ratings on multimeters, you want to make sure that you have a 
meter that can check from zero to 20k ohms. You, uh, I prefer one that can uh, go up to about 20 meg ohms. You won't usually find the combination between one that can read amperage and high ohms, but you can read continuity and low ohms with a lot of these digital meters, uh, uh, amp meters. Now, Keep in mind that when you do measure amperage, you only want to uh, measure one conductor. If you have more than one conductor in there, you'll get the uh, a false reading for uh, or, or a combined reading. Depends on whether you actually want to do that or not, but they can cancel out. Amperage-wise, you probably want something that can measure up to approximately 200 amps. From 1 to 200, we don't have too many circuits that we need to measure lower than uh, 1 amp, but that's a kind of a rarity. Last but not least, never, ever, under any circumstances, use your own meter on a live circuit. A lot of meters, especially the digital, have built-in protection, and they may save you on that. But one such as an analog meter, you hook that up to a live circuit, and chances are you have toasted your meter. Uh, best thing to do is always make sure that it's de-energized before you use your own meter. Thank you very much.